spiritual practice and achieving higher results? Well, achieving higher or better results uh, is almost as good as no results. <laughs> like spiritual practice and achieving no results. <laughs> That's good. That's what we're talking about. It is, is no results the ultimate goal? Well, we're talking, then we're talking not to be funny, but we're talking about no karmic, karmic um, <clears throat> repercussions. Yeah. In fact, spiritual practice then literally means karmaless actions, or what I've called in the past, free actions. So spiritual practice means living in the spirit of free actions. And that means where yourself plays less a part in the process and your heart or something else plays more of a part to get the same results that show up in the world of appearances or, let's say, in terms of cause and effect. Yeah. Because from this state, state of mind or state of consciousness, we can say there, are, there is no karma, there are no karmic. There is no comma. Zero. Zero comma. Yeah. And realizing that is good practice. Yeah. You can practice realizing that. But there is no comma. Yeah. There's no one to serve in that sense. Except let's say, in some traditions the master. Right? Which then becomes a matrix for uh, no comma. And the whole purpose I'm mean, teaching, I'm guru, is so that you move outside of your karmic field into the, the field of no karma. Yeah. No consequences, no effects, yeah. no causes, in fact. Yeah. And then we can get into uh, the realization, which seems like some kind of ridiculous ideal. Nothing happens. And yet, you know, the grass grows and rain falls and the sun shows up and the earth uh, revolves around the sun. So everything is happening while nothing's happening. We need to get into that zone where we're right in, right in the inter, inter, the inter point there, See, the neutral, where we, we are so clear we're allowing it to happen because the, the superconscious knows so well, so much better than the self-consciousness, that it's going to do what it has to do. Some, some traditions say that's spiritual. Let spirit do it. Right? And this is a commandment. See? This is a commandment put upon the human. Let spirit do what it can do best for everyone. But we, we, we're not in a society, where, or even a religious culture, where that's you know the, the command. Yeah. That's very direct, and that has to do with the highest results. If you want to call them highest results, the no result, yeah. the ultimate no result, yes. liberation, freedom already yeah. accomplished. So work with right now. Zero action, free action, and and to get closer to this, then you have to breathe that. You have to completely relax into it. See? See? It's almost like the deeper consciousness. You need to seep into it or melt into it, and and be conscious of its purpose as um, producing commonless free action. Commonless free action is. Also the way of peace. It's not like some kind of hype. No, it's not hype. It's a real, realization. That is to say, at its level, it's reality. It's all there is at its level. And we have to be open to that if we want to call ourselves spiritual practices on the path of self-transition. And we have to include that in our conversation. Because then it's a conversation with your inner, your inner circuitry. And maybe, according to some schools, you're, you're appealing then to the inner master, right. superconscious, same thing. Someone says God, right. some say it's even spiritual center point of the universe. Yeah. Cosmic realization, universal realization. No problem. Call it what you want. Could you be, be you? It's just a yeah. your I am. Some schools, even biblical schools, see I am. Not that I am this, that, or whatever. It's the I am. I am, as it is, only. Right. Yeah, the first and, and foremost yeah, reality. I am the it is, let's say, or it is the I am. 
but we're not using the language just to dramatize language. We're using the language that connected properly produces what we, we title this particular conversation, which is highest results. No, no one home, highest results. Heartfulness, highest results. All these are relevant to the cause of activating the inner consciousness. Sidestepping the whole self, self thing. The particular personal self, the humanoid, the automaton, the consumer machine, the toilet, garbage bag, so for culture. And get into what, what this is, is not so much effect, but cause. Going back to the origin. The origin then is light itself. <clears throat> no karma. Original free self or true self. Or, yeah. Zero heart space. Yeah. We call it these things yeah. symbolic terms to uh, say bring about a window effect, seeing beyond, <clears throat> so seeing through things, seeing the, the, uh, the origin of everything, source. I'm talking about source and source consciousness. <clears throat> Highest result already achieved source consciousness. See, super samadhi. See, nothing to do, nothing going on. Everything is happening of itself. See, super samadhi. Super contemplation. No doing, just happening. See, it's like the body's function is happening. Breathing is happening. Seeing is happening. Hearing is happening and speaking is also happening. So all of this is part higher results that we start from, not end up in. We start from it. That's the difference. See, so where to start from? It's nowhere. See? That means everywhere. Paradox. Yeah. And this is important. <clears throat> it's good practice. <clears throat> Highest result already achieved. Already present. Nothing you can do about it. <clears throat> nothing to be added, nothing to be sub subtracted. No oneness, basically, no oneness is part of this process. So, so we have to recover our original no oneness, <clears throat> as I've written about it, uh, emphatically, yeah. uh, which is a spiritual state. I mean, it's not a material state. It's not even a word. It just is what it is. Clear state. We're talking about the neutral. Now we're talking neutral, clear, zero state, no comma. So now we tie it together, <clears throat> giving for karmic effects, see, and then giving beyond karma. See, see, you are being given see, by the ultimate, the ultra giver, which is the heart itself. So you're the thing that's being sacrificed all the time. And this is important to see it that way as well. That's good practice. Comment now. Can you compare or contrast good karma with no karma? Good karma is karma that you like. <laughs> that you dig, that you sugar, <laughs> honey, pastry karma. <laughs> Say yum 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 karma. I love this karma. <laughs> right, good to eat karma. Right? Best food karma. Right? Uh, no karma is beyond description. <clears throat> it's total. It's gone karma. Karma of goneness. Right? Liberation. Right? Zero. No oneness, <clears throat> no food, no pastry, beyond description, incomprehensibly already gone. Yeah. No comma, yeah. nobody there counting, no counter, no banker, no accountant, zero, no intermediary, no sort, no self, no others, period. Yeah. See, heart state, heart awareness, just If you have a good one, regular beat, and so on. Heart. So we need to come back to the heart because the heart is already no karma. Without it, you're dead, which is also no karma. 
So no karma is what's life and what's dead. <laughs> in other words, it doesn't matter, there's nothing happening. You've got to be at the place where there's nothing happening. In order to be free enough to be able to do what it is, your actual river blood karma, what's gathered, collected, and sort of like embodied around you uh, as a foundation to be able to accomplish in this particular life. So then it's a paradox. You have the karma which has nothing to do with you, and you're able to accomplish that karma which has nothing to do with you. And that depends on where you are in this ship. See, that is using the body, the earth body, to travel through space and time. And the practitioner is in the most advantageous position relative to that. In fact, the sweet spot where it happens by itself. Paradox, mystery, but then that's also realization of spirit for what it is as being super conscious. Yeah, not mechanical consciousness or ego consciousness, whatever the barriers, obstructions, or limitations, right? and ignorances that, that encompasses. Yeah. It's none of that. It's clear, so it's in and out breathing. Clear radiance, in other words, without adding all this junk. It's free breathing, free of karma. So, by what means does one get from karma, good or bad, to no karma? Well, there is no karma, so what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> See, there's already no karma. <laughs> then karma is an assumption. Karma is a program, right, that, that congests and obstructs time and space from expanding. So, we're talking about the mind that constricts, it contracts energy into itself, as itself, for itself. And you're just thinking. You have problems, which you do have, as long as you're thinking that way. And then thinking that way is a problem, in a sense, because free of that thinking that way, there's clearance, there's no, no problem. And yet we're talking about clear conscious operation relative to the superconscious that enables you to know what it is you need to do, how to do it, when to do it, by itself, not even with your, your ordinary self having much to do with it. Who is that seeped into the heart consciousness to allow that to be the re realization? When all you're preoccupied with, for the most part, is how you look, how you smell, how you do, how you talk, how you drive, how you play music. Right? It doesn't need to know, but you can continually feed it. This wood, you know, we hope, burns up some point. Big, big mountain of wood there, see, you're piling on it. It doesn't need that. So practice is the neutralization, I mean the balancing out of the karma we've already created by tendency, by program from birth relative to our river blood karma and, and whatever, whatever all that means in terms of like being somebody or being something, doing something, accomplishing these things that are part of the blood programming, which are fine, but nobody is that. When we're talking about spiritual realization, nobody is that. That can be taken care of quite by itself, right? without the aggravation in the human melodrama. Right? And it is better to handle it from that place. Right? You disappear. And appear as needed. Make your appearances as needed. But you know who's, who's really running the show then. Right? And all that consciousness that is supposedly there in the brain is put to a higher use, a higher purpose. All that brain power. They say we well, want one, two, five percent. We use it because it has better things to do, and this is one of the better things you can do: is to live your life for you, because you're not living your life for yourself. <clears throat> your heartbeat is not dependent upon what you do in a sense, unless you stop it somehow dramatically. Your hair, everything that's going on in the body is controlled by something else. So give it back to its source in a manner of speaking. Merge with the source. This is what meditation, higher meditation is about. Stepping out of the way. 
but we're so addicted to our functioning in a certain way. It's, it's very dangerous to, to propose to even your self-mind that you're going to step out of the way and let spirit take, take over. Because you can't, you can't do that successfully unless you have a lot of training in the transition. You got to know what, what the self is, and you got to know beyond that what, what the thing is that you're going to be turning it over to. Yeah. We, we don't know enough about that yet. Ordinarily, that's why people join these uh, works, so they, they can understand more about the unconscious, in a sense, the, or the superconscious, as we've been calling it, the superconscious, yeah. and its function in its all. It's a world of uh, doing karma, acting, and experiencing okay, as a self. Self-realization means entering selfless realization. Selfless realization means putting it back on source. How important is a sense of humor or a sense of playfulness to achieving the no karma? How important is it? Well, it's not going to cause it to show up. <laughs> but when you get the closer you get to it, the more ridiculous everything else seems. So yeah, you become more humorous, maybe even man in a sense. But not as a strategy. It's just a pure response to you know what's happening that isn't creating the right results. It's funny. It's like a joke. You stand in the way, you're laughing at yourself, you're crying about yourself, it's all, all about self. And so we have to see that. We're, we're the thing we're trying to get rid of all the time. We're the thing we need to get rid of all the time. <laughs> Only that. <laughs> Just think how life would be if you weren't there. <laughs> in other words, if you weren't there to enjoy it, how, how, how enjoyable would your life be? Yeah, it's kind of a joke. We have to see it as such because we're talking about the no-self. And that's like an absurd proposition for peace. But it's, in fact it's real because we, we are selfless by nature. And we assume self. As soon as somebody starts pointing at us, say, you, 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 you. We start assuming that it's more than what we are. So we are reduced to that. Oh, see, you come down to that. And then you live that. Because you, know, you feel you, you justify it somehow, you rationalize that you have to live that way, otherwise your peeps won't accept you. You have to be this thing that they're talking about. And then when you get to the Guru's house, you say, what is that? There's nothing. What do you mean you're something? There's nothing. you got to get back to what you really are, it's nothing. <laughs> Comment on that. It seems that every culture, you know, reinforces that self-mechanism, so you know, the temptation is to call it a universal thing and thus a true thing. You know. Well, it is a thing. and It is an important thing. Everything is important. So the idea to be able to use itself as a program is given to us to be used as, uh, so that we have the liberty, right? The, the creative uh, liberty and opportunity, being more than self, to operate from what we can call the heart center, heart space, or compassion. Compassionism, as I recently Coined it, compassionism, yeah. using your right to compassionism. <clears throat> now, a lot of people say, oh, they're against isms. Well, the compassionism is good, isn't it? Yeah. Come on. Um, I'm just trying to think of, you know, the impossible, how you get from. You're already there. Yeah. You're already there. You, see, you, just, you are refusing to be there. That's what's making you laugh. Your resistance to be beyond yourself is hilarious to you. <laughs> well, it's a ridiculous proposition because you don't exist. <laughs> you laugh at that. You're going to die laughing over that one. <laughs> so this guy is crazy. He says, I don't exist. <laughs> and I'm here laughing at <laughs> Right. <laughs> exactly. Right. Dumb. The wisdom. Yeah. Right. My point. So, so you're not that. You're not the unhappiness. You're bliss. Right now you had a moment of bliss. So, heart expanse. So, humor. Call it that. But it's heart expanse. So part of you is saying it's laughing because it sounds ridiculous, but at the same time it's laughing because that's its nature. Bliss is the nature, original nature. I is bliss. Really. 
That's what it is. It's not some things beyond that. It's not limitation, it's not confinement, it's not materialism. It's just bliss, pre-empty. That means it doesn't exist. I just, nothing. Yeah. So we need to be careful that we don't step over the edge of sanity. Yeah. Because that's too easily done in this idea, you know, in this world and such. And this is sanity. This is happiness. Yeah. Relative to understanding that the true nature of bliss and our reali reality, or true reality and such, what is real. Yeah. Heart first. Yeah. Spiritual realization. High, highest result, maybe, or maybe least result, no result. Yeah. That means beyond results. Yeah. Not to be boxed. Yeah. Yeah. So we are that, the divine human. We are divine human. Yeah. Not every moment, because you know, the circumstances that own us don't allow us that. Yeah. But that can happen, yeah. as it may have happened a little bit here uh, this evening, so for the few who understand that. We have to create our openness to what that is. You have to create your openness to the inner worlds. You have to create and allow yourself to be open to the spiritual worlds, beyond your self-mind and your programming and beyond this culture and its uh, taboos and limitations and so on and so forth. It's prejudices. Okay? It's oppressiveness see, relative to spirituality and it's impressiveness relative to materiality. See? Yeah. No one wants you to look better, not to really be better, to look better, to have more at the cost of having less consciousness. You have more stuff, less consciousness. I'm going to say that's a true, absolute equation, because you're going to have a lot of stuff and still have a lot of consciousness. Yeah. But you don't see that when you're buying something. Right? You don't see that on the, on the tag. Don't forget your consciousness. <laughs> you're paying a thousand dollars for this little pair of socks here, but don't forget your consciousness. See? Come in. So. We, we make an assumption of having free will, but it seems like as long as we're operating under beliefs and Then it's just a thought, then it's just a phrase. It's not a phrase. The universe is a phrase, but we know that's the space where we're in. You don't have to even imagine it. The earth is like this living being, this wonder of nature, it's a miracle, miraculous. You're not projecting that, it's obvious. Present. And we're breathing what, what's left of the oxygen on the planet. Yeah. We're not projecting that, it's a fact. Yeah. So we have to know the facts and keep it real, understand that. What we're talking about is related to the reality. You know, e equals mc squares. Say Einstein's take on, on this. And we are, in other words, we are, we are infinite spiritual potential in the body. Yeah. And he came to terms with it in his own way relative to the physics of his own. His business. Well, we have to say some of his madness came from his violin. We have to acknowledge that too. He was out there. Okay. So he was into the sound. Okay. So he was kind of a spaceman in a sense. To the sound. He expanded his mind, which is what music's supposed to do. Take you outside of the barriers of your intellect. So it sounds right brain, not left brain. Yeah. Yeah. Space. Yeah. We are space beings and time, time machines. We are space beings in a time machine universe. So we need to, we need to open to our freedom and not just assume it. We need to understand and realize our freedom. That means liber liberation. To be better beings, we need to understand what that liberation is. We need to be more heartfelt beings, giving, caring beings, from a level of uh, not so much strategy and agenda and deal, what the best deal is, but really from the point of view of the heart, what is what is the, the best way to bring about the liberation process? So, expansion and extension of heart consciousness. Right? Into what? The vast expanse, as it's called in, in spiritual works. Right? Infinite space. Or supreme being, is another word for it. It would seem that karmalist state is, is the free state, so... It's the divine state. It's the divine condition. It's the real condition. The rest of this is just... Uh, more or less the materialized version of what it is that we're willing to see because of the appearance of it, see, relative to our physical body. That's not the inner appearance of it. See, the inner is very different. It's concrete, yes. Nothing wrong with it, but it's not the truth. It's not the source of it. So we need to see the source as well as see the effect. 
thing and be okay with both dimensions of it. The material as part of the spiritual, pervaded as it is by the spiritual, the atomic, that means the subatomic or superatomic energy, right? which the scientists have a handle on that now, so it's not like, you know, fantasy. It's not, you know, psychosis. It is scientific now, so maybe they've gone over the edge now, right? So it's like religion now. They, they've merged. Religion and science are sharing the same bed now. Right? Bedfellows. Bedmates. Yeah. Because they're, they're seeing the same thing, they're talking the same talk. Yeah. Things have come together, literally. In a sense. The highest of both are unified. It's one. Yeah. It's no difference. Yeah. One is science, the other is religion, and so they're the opposites. You have religious scientism now, and scientific religion now. So it would seem that the higher results are to be found in realization. Yeah, and they're not results. It's a no result. It's a paradox. So the idea of course, to avoid concretization of what it is and limit yourself to words. And that's why I say we've got to use words as windows, not just as mirrors reflecting our limitations. But we have to use the words as windows to more or less um, come to recognize our freedom from limitation, seeing beyond the window, everything is that. See through, see beyond. See? See, embrace the total beyond itself. 